Hi everybody. It's a beautiful Monday here and I just wanted to come out and show you guys some of the seedlings, the lettuce seedlings, romaine lettuce. They're doing quite well. I did lose some of them in a snow in February, a little ways back there. I had to plant some new lettuce in. These are a mixture of the Tom Thumb and the uh, all year lettuce. I have some beans planted here. Oh, get that up there. I have contender and also the harvester beans planted right around here. I have planted pretty deep, probably about that far down, just to kind of give them more of a chance that so the birds don't pick them up and so that they come up. I have such clay soil though that I had to dig everything up and cover this back up with some compost because I just didn't think the beans were going to do well in there. The peas on the other hand, they they don't care what the soil is like just because they are nitrogen fixing. So I'm, I'm thinking about peas around here maybe maybe only for half this end of the bed. They get It gets pretty good sunlight here and we grew pea here's, peas here last year and they, they did pretty well. We had a big harvest of peas every day. That's how that's looking. I'll show you some of the all the way down. Got some big ones here that are getting pretty nice. This planter that I had filled with with lettuce, I took out. I planted one of them over here. I, I undug it. And these are all petunias because I have a ton of petunias and they're honestly getting huge. I'll, get that out seed from this tree up here that tree I don't know if you can see it in the sun but that freaking tree just seeds trees I call them peanut butter trees because when you break them open they they smell like peanut butter and they, it's just a weird looking tree but here are some of my gigantic petunias that I have I don't know if you can see the color too well on those but petunias are really usually a light green color most of the time but these are just a beautiful dark green color on the leaves and here's the second one that's a little bit smaller this one is just oh, I got a broken leaf there this one's just completely going crazy um, here are some of the nasturtiums and they are doing great I have planted them in their own pots separately except for these two just let those two grow together I killed off my uh, Mosaputica or a sensitivity plant, or my girlfriend from Mosaputica, sensitivity plant, sorry. She's, uh, that's her plant, and she told me to just get rid of it because it was just looking sickly. It wasn't wanting to grow properly, and it was just dying. But, uh, yeah, this is all the stuff. I'm going to take you inside really quick to show you. Um, the seed, how the seed leaves are doing for the tomatoes and the peppers and all that. I just transplanted them today, and I'll just go over some maybe some procedures on like what transplant. I didn't have time to boot the camera up and show you earlier because I had to get to school, but I will show you really quick right now and just kind of go over it with you. So here we are inside, out of the, the windy but sunny weather, and these are the seedlings. All of those onions that I planted earlier pretty much I mean besides a few here in the middle uh, came up and there's the other in the back these are the white onions and over here I have the red onions less of the red onions have come up I, I did notice they were slower to germinate here are all the tomatoes pretty much yeah no I didn't have any down below anymore these are all the tomatoes right here right in front of you and in the back I have some red Russian kale right here some rainbow Swiss chard I just planted and there's coming up some all, more all year lettuce to successively plant after I the other all year lettuce and Tom Thumb lettuce get big enough I have one uh, lime basil I have labeled lemon basil but they're lime basil and then two more up here and they're looking great other two are huge 
I did get them a little bit too close to the light because they can be sensitive to light sometimes and they got a little burnt, but they'll be fine. And then I have a one of the Rutger tomatoes and one of these Dixie cup or these Daisy cups, Solo cups, sorry, Solo cups. And then some of the of the peppers back here. These are the Orange King peppers. Got four of those planted. The Yolo peppers are a little bit slower to germinate. I didn't have one. I had planted two in this cell. Not one of them came up, so I didn't have full. 100% germination with that, but they're looking all looking good. I mean, I have t two more petunias in the back, so I'm just littered with petunias right now. I had so many actually grow and take hold really well. Uh, at the back over here, there's the borage. I had to, I planted a couple more and they came up. They don't have very good germination rate. Just just a heads up if you want to plant borage. I would probably tr just suggest buying a lot of seeds and then just broadcast seeding outside because they don't have a very good germination rate at all. Here is the it's a gourmet lettuce, as you can see right there in the tag. I had pretty much all of those come up, and that was a free sampler pack from SeedsNow.com that they sent me when I ordered a bunch of seeds, and I just planted some more lemon basil in the... Uh, cocoa core uh, sacks because those planting and these for uh, a variety of different things thyme, um, basil, other different herbs that are very sensitive to bacterial infection and uh, unclean soil. I would highly suggest that you plant in there because any sort of like bacterial compost or anything like that can can get on the leaves and it'll kill the plant from the leaves in so I would suggest planting them in these and not uh, not the uh, what are they called modular trays modular trays not planting them in the modular trays I did have a time where I had to lower my lights down to get these closer because my plants weren't growing as enough. As soon as I lowered these down, I, I thought that the shiny reflective surfaces in here would do enough to reflect the light around and give them enough, but they needed more and I lowered it down to about, these are 250 watts, and I've lowered them down to about, I don't know, I wouldn't say give that probably about three or four inches from the popsicle sticks, and then there's another probably six or so inches there so probably that's at least a good foot and a, and a half foot and a quarter and that's doing fine they're doing what really well with that they're growing really really well with that distance so if you have a 200 watt on the round type lights the round compact fluorescence with the big mo mogul or mogul base mogul base Let's see if I can get up there there mogul base it's a really big based system, then just put them about roughly foot and a quarter to um, a quarter of a foot away from your plants and they'll do great. Planting these today, I just used the, the bury some of the stem method because of course the tomatoes are part of the nightshade family, so because they're part of the nightshade family you can bury the stem and they'll grow roots out and they'll become stronger and produce more. So when I when these grow up a bit and I go and plant them out into the out into the garden, I'm gonna bury the stem even more. I'm probably gonna break off some some of the little seedling leaves too as well to uh, probably these guys and a couple more, maybe even the brand new when they are left behind when it grows up. And plant those in the ground, uh, break them off, plant this whole stem in the ground, and you'll produce t tons more tomatoes. Of course, there's the fact that you you also want to add some rock dust is a good thing to add calcium to the soil. Or you can add also, if you wanted to kind of overdo it, you could add rock dust and uh, Epsom salt. They'll both add tons of calcium to the soil, and uh, you'll avoid blossom end rot. 
but to transplant these I just all I did some people use different methods I I took the little tray took it in I filled it completely up with soil I stuck my finger down into the soil and made a nice big hole for the modular trays to the plugs to come out and then I just took the, the seed thing and just just pressed on both sides in until they went all the way down and until I did it down as, as far as I can get them and to where the stem was a happy length to me where it was just kind of like a you know small length and then I and then I just you know covered it up just lightly covered it up you know patted it down a bit don't want to press too hard just about about as hard as you push in your eyeball and it would start hurting as I would say like it's hard to gauge but that's about as as hard as I would push on these guys when you're putting them in some people like to do the the where you put the seedling in and kind of match the soil method where you dig the soil out and then you kind of like you know put it in around it and then then you you firm it up and you push your fingers in the corners or whatever I don't like that because I like just tapping the soil down then putting my finger in it because it just it's so much easier it's less soil doesn't get everywhere you just can just put your finger in the soil get the soil at like the right amount of size with your finger going around and around and then you just put the seedling in and it's then it's over with you just cover it up boom done so that's what I've been doing I'm gonna have these peppers to transplant here soon these hopefully I'm gonna get out in the garden soon and nothing outside is sprouted yet I've had some problems with my neighborhood cats uh, coming in and digging up some of my beds it's kind of pissing me off I'm probably gonna have to be a mean mean person to them and get a like a deer sprinkler or something to get keep them out or some sort of chicken wire to make sure they don't get into the beds that have supplanted them because they just they love to poop in all my garden soil and beds but yeah that's that's what's going on here it's all looking good I'll give you a quick look down here I got rid of some of my nephew's plants um, so I only have my four Camellia census plants and then the thyme bush it's looking kind of chewed up because I just harvested from it I think I need to give it some more water and fertilizer but and then the sage bush which is doing great and it's getting warm enough around here today is a nice 55 degrees and it's sunny and I mean it's a little windy but it's getting warm enough to where I might want to just plant this outside of the ground and be done with it in here so I have more space right here to put my uh, my seedlings right which are going these tomatoes are going to get quite big before I want to put them out hold them in these containers for a while but they're going to get a little little long as long as if the, but if the weather holds as right now or warms up even better if it gets in the upper 60s and only into the 40s at night I think I'd probably harden these guys off and take the risk in putting them outside and just let them grow a little slower and then finally pick up when the weather warms so look forward to that and uh, be, be coming I'll be making a couple more videos here shortly on uh, a few things I don't know I, I, I need some input I think what do you guys think if you, if you can drop a comment in the comment below and the, just uh, kind of ask what you'd like a video on. I can, I can make it and hopefully answer some questions. Maybe somebody have. If you have a question that you'd like to be answered, drop it in the comments below, and I will answer them. This is John from the Italian Garden signing off, and uh, please subscribe.